Now. So good morning to everybody. It's lovely to see you. And it's always great to see you. Wonderful. If you want to put yourself on mute, if you can remember to do that, that'd be lovely. Thank you very much. A few quick notices and then we're going to go for it and worship God together. Here's one I've never said before. So this is a new notice. Whoa. There are three boxes of biscuits in the church kitchen. You know, the family circle type big boxes. But Jill and I noticed this last week or so, that they're 14 months out of date. So Jill and I have done some baking and have used some of the biscuits as a base for cheesecakes and stuff like that. It works a treat. So if you want one of those boxes, let me repeat, they're 14 months out of date. But if you want <laughs> one of the boxes, let me know and I'll get it for you and deliver it to you. So you don't need to go get it yourself, but it's 14 months out of date, but if you want one, I'll make sure I get you one. But there's only three. So there's the first notice. I've never said that in my life before. These are the <laughs> ones, you know all of these, but I'll still say them anyway. Our next physical service is next week. So if you want to book in from today with Joe, booking in will finish by Friday at noon. Uh, you will need to book in. Don't just think you've been before, so it's okay to turn up. You need to book in each time. Uh, Wednesday, we've got our Zoom prayer meeting, eight o'clock, and uh, lots of interaction, because that's what happens on the midweek meeting. So it'll be good to see you there. A week on Thursday is our next church council meeting, 20th of May, that is. That's going to start at eight o'clock, and it'll also be on Zoom, maybe for the last time. We don't know. We'll see. Uh, let me know if you want to send an apology directly, though. And uh, if you want to, to anything to go on the agenda, let me know again directly and we'll make sure that happens. Two more things. Tuesday email restarted two weeks ago. I know some people haven't had it directly from me. Uh, it just hasn't arrived. So if you think you should have had one and you used to get one last year, let me know and I'll try and work out what's going on. And the last thing, breakout rooms are at the end. So stop and chat with other people if you want to. It's a great thing to do. I'm just going to read something out of Isaiah 40, because in my present Bible, that's one of the most thumbed chapters in the Bible. So here it is, Isaiah chapter 40, just a couple of verses. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers his lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. So I'm really glad that God is gently holding us, leading us and taking us where we need to go. So let's praise God together. And then we're going, we're going to pray together first. And then, like we say, we'll praise God together with a few songs. And uh, yeah, that's going to be grand. <clears throat> so let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that you're just not an almighty God full of power and strength and omnipotence, but you are tender and you come close to us and you let us approach you and worship you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, as we worship you and learn about you more today, help us, Lord, to have our ears open and our eyes open as well. But thank you for your tenderness towards us today, your new mercies towards us as well. Amen. 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 So let's sing Blessed Be Your Name and uh, stand if you want to, shake your body if you want to. It's great. We can do all of those things. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place, when I walked through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out on, turn back to praise. When the darkness causes in, Lord, 
still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, When the sun's shining down on me, When the world's all as it should be, Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, i turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Indeed, Lord, it is a blessed a blessed day because we have you this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it we will praise you for your goodness to us this past week your provision and your love you are a generous god as we come together today to worship Although we are still not able to meet in the churches, you are not limited to boundaries. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. This morning, Lord, we thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for all of nature that shines out and tells us that you are the God of all gods. You are an awesome God an amazing God, and we praise you this morning. We pray, Lord, that the elections that have taken place, that those elected fulfill promises with integrity. We pray that as we, as we approach the opening of the lockdown due to this pandemic, that caution will prevail that we will remember those that died and families that are still grieving for their loved ones. This morning, Lord, we pray for those in India. We pray, Lord, that those have been facing great challenges. We pray for the workers in the Mercy Mission, that all their needs be met. We pray for the one, Lord, that has been mentioned by Maggie this morning, Lord, in a country, Lord, that really needs you this morning, would you be merciful to them? Lord, this morning, thank you once again for our NCF family, for John and Jill that work so hard. Lord, this morning, we pray for the YWAM work and all that takes place there. We pray, Lord, for all the churches in the Neaton and in the surrounding areas that where your name is proclaimed, that you will be glorified. And that as we come out of this lockdown, Lord, that people will come in to our churches 
and that they will find in you the great one that has sustained us and kept us and long. We just long, Lord, to see our churches grow in. We long in our area to see uh, the uh, church grow with all the new estates that have gone on, that people will come in and find us as a family that love you and will worship with us. We pray this morning, if there's anyone feeling sad and not well amongst us, that you would touch and heal. And as we hear your word, we will be blessed and encouraged to face the coming week. We thank you for the news this morning from Kath, that her knee is comfortable and that her eye. Lord, indeed you are a very caring God and we thank you that we have you, that in times like these, we can turn to you. I would just pray, Lord, at this moment for my cousin who's experiencing these symptoms. Lord, I just pray that it would be negative. I pray for my friends, Lord. Don't often ask, Lord, in public, but would you just touch the families, Lord, that are grieving at the moment and as we put them to rest in you. Thank you that they know you. Thank you that they're with you. But I just pray, Lord, that the sadness that we're all feeling at this time, that we will just rest in you because you are the most amazing God. So for this morning, that you would take whatever takes place now, that we would glorify you, that we would hear your word, that you would give us a heart, Lord, and ears to learn and to carry out, Lord, that you have laid on the heart of whoever speaks this morning. And so, Lord, today, to the King Eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen.
reading today is from the book of Daniel chapter 3 verses 4 to 23. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, to you the command is given, O peoples, nations and men of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the mid midst of a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, at the time when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. For this reason, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and brought charges against the Jews. They responded and said to Nebuchadnezzar the king, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe and all kinds of music is to fall down and worship the golden image. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon, namely Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. These men, O king, have disregarded you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and anger, 
gave orders to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all the kinds of musical instruments, to fall down and worship the image I have made. Very well. <clears throat> but if you do not worship, you will immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with wrath, and he, his facial expression was altered towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He answered by giving orders to heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He commanded certain valiant warriors who were in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to cast them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then these men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their caps, and their other clothes, and were cast into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. For this reason, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace had been made extremely hot, the flame of fire slew those men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. And we know it's rhetorical because all of you are on mute. So that's all right, isn't it? If you ever go travelling, whether for a day or for an extended spell, what do you need to take? I'm going to give you a miscellaneous term. We need to take stuff, don't we? We all take stuff when we go out for the day or go out for a holiday. In 587 BC, most of the people of Judah went on a journey, but it wasn't planned for. It wasn't looked forward to. Like when we'll eventually go on holiday, we're going to look forward to it. But the people of Judah weren't looking forward to this. It wasn't planned. They didn't really want it to happen. They were being taken into exile by the Babylonians. Their capital city had been razed to the ground. And even worse, the temple, where for many generations the living God had been worshipped, had been totally destroyed. The exiles would have had virtually nothing with them as they went into Babylon. They even had their names changed. Today, as uh, we've heard, we're, we're thinking about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. But their parents didn't call them then those names. Their parents called them Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. Their names were changed when they got to Babylon. Would you have liked to be called by a different name by some bureaucrat? How would you feel about it? What if you were known as prisoner 24601? How would you feel about that? How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land, as Psalm 137 reminds us? The people of Judah had nothing, and yet from a different perspective, they had everything. They had to look to God, as we've heard already today, people saying, yeah, I'm looking to God. That's, that's the reminder again, that in this time of great tragedy, they had to look to God. 
perhaps you've read the book of Habakkuk like I have, it's one of my favourite books. And near the end of that prophecy in Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19, Habakkuk says this, this is from the New Living Translation. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. Even though, yet, that's just the same attitude, isn't it, as Daniel's friends. And even today, we don't follow God because God makes our life really easy. We follow God because we know that Jesus died for us and rose from the dead. We've been given new life through Jesus. We've been reconciled with God because of what Jesus did. So putting God first is the only correct reaction to what God's done for us. And it doesn't depend on what life is like. It's a decision of our mind and of our will. It's an attitude of our heart. I'm going to put God first in my life because he's given everything to me. I'm going to go and put look to God in all aspects of what I do because he's invested everything in me. As maturing disciples of Jesus, we can't say to God, if you do X, Y and Z for me, then I'll do A, B and C for you. That's so childish, isn't it? And when we say it out loud, we just sort of say, oh, that's just so wrong. How could we do that? But like the three friends of Daniel in Babylon, we need to say if, but if, and like Habakkuk, even though, yet. Remember, this is what they said. This is the New American Standard Bible, as we heard earlier. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods, nor worship the golden statue that you have set up. N.T. Wright, many of you will have heard of, and in his commentary on the book of Acts, he says, grace is not just a doctrine to be believed. It is a fact you can lean your weight on. Nine months ago, when I was considering our Sunday mornings for what we should be learning about in this year, I knew that we had to ponder about God's miracles, which is what we're doing, of course, in April and May. Now, this can be really dangerous, can't it? Because if we ponder on God's miracles and just think about the miracles, then that's just going to lead us to a cul-de-sac. Oh, God, I need your miracles. But if we decide to, dis to look at God's miracles and put all our effort and our energy into thinking about God, then that's the best way. Because God is amazing and it doesn't depend on our circumstances, whether we worship him with lots of heartfelt gestures that are physical or sing out really loudly or quietly. That doesn't matter at all. What matters is that we know God and follow him with all our hearts, strength and mind, just like the three friends in Babylon did. I was thinking about what Nick was saying last week. You know, I often think about what the speakers say, even if it's me, I think about it. And I think, yeah, that's true. Because the 5,000 people and the extra women and children that were there, they didn't go at the start of the day thinking, oh, I bet we're gonna have a miracle today. What they were concerned about was knowing God more, listening to Jesus teach them. And I think it's the same with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They didn't start the day thinking, oh, great, if we do this, then God's going to do a miracle and our names are going to be in a book and of the Bible. and It's going to be amazing. We'll be known forever and people will think how amazing we are. No, it wasn't like that, was it? They started the day saying, God, we put you first. 
it doesn't matter what the consequences are. It doesn't matter what happens. We're putting you first. And that's what they did. They weren't thinking about what might happen to them. They were concerned with God's name and him being glorified. Even King Nebuchadnezzar said something amazing. I think something startling, I'd even use that word. After uh, they came out of the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. We're saying that we want to trust God, but it's that other word, defy. If we're trusting God, that means then we've often got to defy what we're thinking, something internal. Because so often we might in life just think, oh, I'll take charge of that. I'll just do that. I'll do what I think is best. Not because we don't think God can handle it, but it's just what we do. But if we're putting God first, we're having to defy what we're thinking about ourselves, our own wanting to be in charge of things. I think our natural state is to want an easy life, isn't it? We want a wide path, an easy path. And some nice surprises are fine, but we don't want nasty surprises. We want God to be in charge, but we want to be in charge sometimes of our lives. But sometimes things in life aren't easy. Leonard Ravenhill wrote, you can't develop character by reading books. You develop it from conflict. The second talk that we're going to have later on is all about investing our lives in others. And so far today, we've been saying, yes, God's invested a lot, everything in us. And this investment continues. And our only response to God is to say, Lord, you must increase. John, Paul, Jerry, Phyllis, all of us must decrease. That's got to be our attitude. We're not setting out to ask God for miracles of deliverance. We're standing on what God has commanded. Put me first and worship no other. Nothing else matters. But will you do that?
I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender I must give my every part. Lord, receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a King? Savior, what can be said? What can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? All my words could not tell, not even in part of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. You deserve my every breath, for you paid the great cost. Giving up your life to death, even death on a cross. You took all my shame away, then defeated my sin. Opened up the gates of hell and have beckoned me in. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend? To so loving a King, Saviour, what can be said? What can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? All my words could not tell, not even in part of the death of the that is owed of the debt of love of the debt of the that is owed of the debt of love of the debt of the that is owed by this thankful heart Thank you, Lord, for the debt of love that we owe. Lord, thank you that you are the one that we owe, owe everything to. So, Lord, we give our hearts to you, no matter what it's going to be tomorrow, the next day. Lord, our hearts belong to you. So we give you everything we have. Amen. Thank you, my dear. 
My name is Colonel Frank H.W. Miller and I am most thankful to be addressing you today. Earlier today, I was reminiscing with my wife about a lovely birthday I had had while I was studying at Exeter University. The year was 1981. My parents, Dr and Mrs Miller, had sent me a beautiful envelope and the contents encouraged me greatly. There was a musical score for the theme of All Creatures Great and Small arranged for Piano Forte. I so enjoyed learning to play that marvellous piece of music. La 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 Oh, you know the one I mean. Oh, it was gorgeous. Also inside the envelope was something I didn't actually know what to do with. For many months after my birthday, I carried on considering what to do with this gift and still came to no definite conclusion. In the end, I left it pinned to the sheet music I so adored. If you were fortunate years ago, you might also have had one of these, or perhaps you might have had several. Here is the gift. Yes, it's a one pound note. Now, in 1981, that was a great deal of money, especially to a student. I could have bought several oranges, a packet of prawns and some rice and still had plenty of change left. I might have treated a few chums to a fish and chip supper. I might even have put it towards a cassette tape with adorable music on it or used it to purchase some outstanding wallpaper when I bought my first flat. However, the only thing I thought might be useful was to save it for a rainy day. Of course, the problem for saving it for a rainy day is that the next rainy day might be more momentous and more drenching than the current one. So I've kept it in the envelope for the last 40 years so that when the time was right, and I thought I might know at the time when this was, I would spend it. Sometimes when I get the sheet music out, I see the one pound note again and wonder if it might have been better if I had already spent it. Of course, I'm hoping that when a proper and serious rainy day comes, I'll be reminded of this sum of money and use it as my parents would have wished. Between you and me, it's been quite a burden over the years knowing that there was a one pound note I could spend and having no clear idea what to spend it on. Beneath all of the self-assurance that I have from serving Her Majesty in the armed forces for over 30 years, I'm a very sensitive chap. I seem to be detecting some hurtful feelings from some of you. Why didn't he spend it? What good has the one pound note done him sitting in an envelope for 40 years? What a daft thing to do. You're perhaps right. Have you got a one pound note lurking around your personage? Or home. I'm talking metaphorically here. Perhaps for the last year or two you've had a talent or a gift that you haven't shared with anyone. In this time of enforced isolation from others you've not been using the gifts that God has given you. It is easy to let that happen. However, now is the time to start giving your gifts and abilities to others. Now is the time to spend your one pound note. If you're fortunate enough to have some monetary savings, you would put it somewhere where you get a good rate of interest. You would invest it carefully. How will you invest yourself in others? What abilities have you got that will bless others as you spend time with them? Perhaps it's a practical skill, or maybe you have a lovely character 
and people like being with you. Now is the time to invest in what God has given you. Make definite plans to be a blessing to your family and friends, or even strangers. If you're unsure about how you could help or encourage others, then pray about it, and then do whatever God says. Please, do not keep your gifts to yourself. Don't keep your one-pound note in an envelope, unused and often forgotten about. Actively invest yourself in others. I hope to discuss some more important topics with you in the future, but in the meantime, open your life to God and ask him to speak to you. Put God first. Seek God above everything else. Make him the top priority in your life. Stay safe everyone and cheerio! So that's another challenge for all of us, isn't it? To not just let God invest himself in us, but for us to invest our lives in other people. Even when things can be tricky and hard, we know God calls us to be people that will be a light and a shine for him. So let's keep on praying about those sort of things. We're going to be sort of singing now, In My Wrestling and In My Doubts. God is with us, that never stops. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled soul. You are the peace in my troubled sleep. In my silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore, safe to shore. Tomorrow brings with each morning I'll rise and see my God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Far before us. You're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. Far before us, you're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. Far before us, you're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. Far before us, you're the brightest.
silence then we don't need to take ourselves off mute but what we're going to do we're just going to pray for anyone that we see on the screen now if you're on the phone uh most of us are here just now we can uh uh pray for those that you remember but if you are online and you can see people just pray silently for them now you don't need to take yourself off mute like we say but that the lord would help them to put god first and to invest their lives in others too so just for 30 seconds, a minute at the most, let's pray for that. Then we're going to conclude with a hymn. So yes, we do bring all of us to you, Lord, and our families and friends. Lord, with the challenges today, we want to put you first and not be bothered about the consequences, Lord. We want to worship you and you only. So Lord, leaders and guiders, give us the strength that we know that it could only be God that does things in our lives because it can only be God that does those things because they are amazing. We look to you, Lord. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can be so full. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me. My Saviour, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide, O oh life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need. 
the area and teach me thy will. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I need thee every hour. Teach me thy will. And thy rich promises in me fulfill. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, most holy one. Thou blessed Son, I need Thee, oh, I need Thee, every hour I need Thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to So Lord, we do come to you. We need you in our lives today, not just in the easy parts of our lives or the difficult parts of our lives, but every part of our lives. So Lord, we need you and we're coming to you again with our arms open, our hearts alight to you, saying, Lord, be everything we need. We intend to follow you, just like we've heard today, others following you in the past. Lord, give us the grace and the strength to lean on your grace and not to lean on our own understanding. We thank you, Lord, for being with us today. Amen. Amen.